Hi guys, welcome to Talk To Me Tuesday for Tuesday, September 2nd, 2014. This is Jennifer. I have an action-packed Talk To Me Tuesday for you today, so I'm going to talk really fast and get everything in, hopefully by the end of the video. So first things first, a uh, little update on Mikey's quilts. The deadline was Friday. Um, I know that one of the missing two blocks is in the mail to me. I did receive Thor's hammer, which you can see right here. Um, I've got another one coming behind me. I have not heard about this one, so um, I put uh, a message out there that if I haven't received um, all of the blocks by Friday, I'm going to go ahead and piece whatever's missing and get this piece. Um, a little update on Mikey. He did have his transplant. He's in the hospital right now, so if you want to follow what's going on there, his mom makes regular updates on Mikey's fight. And I've also linked it from the Phantom and Stitches Facebook group, and I'll put a link in the description as well. I do have my fabrics ready to go to uh, go ahead and piece this as soon as I have all the pieces. So this will be the sashing in between the blocks. I originally planned to do black and I just decided it brought the colors down too much with the colors that we have here. And um, so it's going to be yellow sash between the blocks. This will be the next border and this will be the final border. So true superhero colors. We've had a quick change of scenery. I did go to a sewing day with some friends on Friday and managed to finish up uh, two Linus tops I had previously started. And I did the majority of a quilt top made of orphan blocks. The one behind me is uh, made of a uh, brick pattern, which these are, this is one of our standard Linus quilts. It's super easy to make. I've already shown this um, without the borders. I just did two side borders because it's long enough, but it wasn't wide enough. And instead of doing more rows of bricks, I did two side borders so that when I bind this, I should, this actually, this fabric came in the uh, traveling swap box and I have enough to use that for a binding on this when it's done too, so that'll have that binding. It'll make it more consistent all the way around. This is another little quilt top I finished for Linus. Um, I had already sewn these squares together. They were from a pre-cut kit that um, one of our volunteers put together. All this guy needed was some borders, and I went ahead and used the stark green that my friend Marge gave me, and now this one, just like the first one, um, needs to be quilted and bound and donated to the Linus Connection. This is the last quilt that I pieced for Linus at the sew day on uh, Friday. This one hadn't even been started yet. This was a stack of orphan blocks from a variety of quilters, um, one of which is our own hard hat cat. Um, I did make one of the blocks in the quilt. The rest of them were all given to me by other quilters. And I wanna address orphan blocks really quick because I get asked this all of the time. What size do I take? Any size. Um, what what theme does it have to be? I'll take any theme. What, what technique? Any technique. It could be any orphan block, any size, as long as it is made out of 100% quilting cotton and it's ready to go on a quilt, that's all I need. It doesn't matter. Um, I do take 12 inch stars for Stars for Linus, but as far as orphan blocks go, I will take any size, any fabric. I have a huge stack and what I do is uh, I go through there peri periodically and I pull out um, similar colors. I pull pull out similar sizes and I will just pull whatever I think I need to pull and put them in a quilt together. So these were all orphan blocks, like I said, just in a stack and now they're a quilt top and they will go in my little pile of unfinished tops for Linus. When I get this done, it will also be donated to the Linus Connection. The other exciting thing that happened this week was on Monday, yesterday, uh, paper piecing vintage for September went up. So this month's block is this guy here. This is called a beggar's block and it's a very traditional, um, as are most of these blocks, a very traditional pattern. Um, this is usually uh, machine pieced using uh, squares or triangles on the corners here and this is entirely paper pieced. Make sure you check on Sew Hooked if you're doing paper piecing vintage. Each month on the first I do a post just about this that month's block and um, I put some hints and tips and useful things about that block in the post. So if you're stitching along be sure and check that post because for example this month um, you can pre-cut strips of fabric and you can pre-cut uh, half square triangles that are a little bit bigger and it saves you a lot of time. This whole thing can be chain pieced. Um, what the difference is with doing that and traditionally piecing and doing that and paper piecing is that while you do pre-cut, you don't have to be as accurate with your pre-cutting and your, um, your points and your perfection, all of that comes, like you get all of these points from paper piece. So the other thing I've gotten up to in the last week is some t-shirt reconstruction for me. I, I told you guys last week or week before last that I'd done a little t-shirt reconstruction. So I uh, showed you the purple t-shirt that I did that had the gathered top. 
Um, these were $3 men's t-shirts, just solid colors. Uh, I got them on clearance sale. All of them were at least a size too big for me. Most of them are two sizes too big for me. It's actually easier for me to work with if they're about two sizes too big, just because you have a little more wiggle room for making mistakes. Um, this shirt uh, I did as well, the same $3 t-shirt uh, purchase that I did. And this one I want to show you, this is actually hand sewn. Um, I used embroidery floss in um, sort of a peach contrasting color and I just hand stitched each one of these little pleats. It probably took me 15 minutes because I knotted them on the outside. I wanted you to see the thread and so um, I did it exactly the same way. I cut the neck out, did the pleats. Uh, hand stitched that using embroidery floss and then I surged down the sides. Super easy, super, super easy. And um, now I have another top to wear that cost me three bucks in about 15 minutes time. I posted some pictures yesterday on um, Instagram, Flickr, Facebook about some fabric stamping I was doing and I was using this stamp and I use Tulip Soft. This is um, Velveteen Blue. So I posted this picture of the stamp fabric and all I showed was the fabric. Well, it was actually a t-shirt. It was an extra large blue t-shirt and I stamped blue on blue because I was sort of playing with this whole um, make some more shirts for myself sort of thing. And this is what I came up with this time. It's a variation on the same thing. Um, this one is Instead of gathering or doing pleats, I cut an inch out of the t-shirt itself across the bottom. So I cut the hem off first, and then I cut another inch off of the bottom, and I just cut that and just sliced it so it would be uh, one long string. And then these are about three quarters of an inch apart. I just did this all the way around where I snipped about um, half an inch down, and gathered that and you can see it gathers on the back too. It actually looks a lot better on than it looks on the hanger but I want you to see the fabric. It's got, this is where I stamped it, I just stamped it all over, I just did a pattern and it's really subtle. Um, it, you don't really see the pattern unless the light hits it which was what I was going for so I'm, I'm happy with this as a first go. Um, I might actually do something, a more finished edge if I do this again. I might um, either do some stitching around it or something just to give it a little bit more character. Um, but anyway, I'm really liking the $3 t-shirts and I need to dig through some of my husband's clothes that he's pulled out of his closet and see if I can find something that I can downsize for myself. It's been a really long time since I did t-shirt reconstruction for myself and I'm really enjoying it. It's really nice to have a super inexpensive infusion of clothes that are things that I really like. I, I'm a big fan of the sort of peasant top style. This is what I like to wear more than anything else. And getting them for three bucks and you know 15 minutes of my time. This one took a little longer because of the paint but even the stamping each side took me about 10 minutes to stamp so half an hour shirt. Tomorrow is the final installment of the Summer of Stitching. Um, this was a new thing for Fandom and Stitches. It was a, a, an idea that I had earlier um, after bouncing some things off of Amber, HB5 Freak, and came up with this idea um, to do a couple of things. One, I wanted to challenge myself to design a different embroidery pattern every week for 12 weeks for Fandom and Stitches, but I also wanted to invite our community who a lot, you know, we have a lot of designers that are repeat designers, but there are a lot of people that maybe want to design something but aren't sure and maybe, maybe just one design is all they need to try or one design is all they need to do to get themselves going. So anyway, in total I did 13 designs. Um, I did two for uh, Monty Python and so this is actually my stack of designs that I did and this is this week's design. This week is I Love Disney and I took Sebastian from The Little Mermaid and it's the text says go on and kiss the girl and he was really interesting to draw. I've watched this movie probably hundreds of times. Uh, my sister was little the first time it came out. My daughter was little the second time it came out and I had never looked that closely uh, at the anatomy of Sebastian and he is an unusual little fellow. It was really interesting to uh, to draw this and stitch it and that is it. That is all for the summer of stitching. Um, that is my final design for that. I am uh, the next thing I'm going to hand stitch and this is actually um, I'm going backwards a little bit. Um, on my princess bride quilt 
I showed you the applique. I started sewing around the letters with clear monofilament. I started zigzagging around it and I just, I'm having, I don't like it. I'm not enjoying it. So I've only done four letters. I'm going to take all of that out and I'm going to blanket stitch around those with embroidery floss. So I'm not going to be working on actual um, embroidery designs like this, but I am going to be working on some hand stitching and um, I'm not in a hurry to get that done as long as the top is done before the end of this year. I would like to have it quilted by the end of this year, but at this point I just want to get all the letters stitched down. So we'll see how long that takes. That's it for today. This is a packed video. It's been really busy around here and uh, all my online communities are hopping right now. So I hope that you guys are participating in at least one of them. Um, I'd love to see you on Talk To Me Tuesday sharing your own video. Don't forget there's a monthly prize every month this year from a different uh, Talk To Me Tuesday participant. Be sure and check that out. Crystal is this month, Clumsy Cord, so make sure you check out her videos. Um, she is sort of looking for ideas, or at least she was last week, for what she's going to do. So be crafty, be sure and share somewhere online, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!